everybody. I'm Dan Colbert, and uh, welcome to the third episode in my series on songwriting, a songwriter's notes on songwriting. So, so far, we've been uh, mainly talking about simple major and minor chords in our chord progressions uh, for our songs, uh, or triads, okay, three-note chords. Uh, these really are the foundations of harmonic structure in Western music. Uh, there's no rule, though, that says we have to uh, just have three notes in, in our chords. Today and next week, I'll be uh, focusing on adding a fourth note into these uh, chords uh, for uh, kind of added spice for the ear. And uh, later on, we'll talk about uh, both two-note chords and five-note chords. So you can see kind of how variable your music can be and how much you can spice them up. Um, so I think, as I've, as I've said I, uh, several times now, I think uh, that the notes we add to these uh, basic major and minor triads, I think of them as spices for the ear. Uh, that's what they do. They spice up the sound for the ear. Um, the salt and pepper, just continuing this metaphor, Salt and pepper spices, in other words, the ones that you almost always add to any dish uh, in music, are sevenths. Otherwise, uh, with their, then there are two kinds of sevenths. Uh, there are flat sevenths and there are major sevenths. Uh, the major sevenths are sometimes called uh, dominant sevenths for reasons we don't need to go into. These are what I'm going to talk about today. So it's going to be two parts. Flat sevenths first, major sevenths uh, second. Now, nomenclature in music is sometimes very confusing and um, unnecessarily complicated. Uh, sometimes I wish someone would just come and redo the whole uh, naming and numbering system in music. Um, and people have tried unsuccessfully. It's pretty embedded now. Um, so anyway, if somebody refers to just a seventh, Okay, I'm going to play a seventh. Um, that's ambiguous because we don't know whether they mean a flat seventh or a major seventh. Um, the major seventh, by the way, is a half step below an octave above the tonic, and a flat seventh would be a full step below that octave above the tonic. Okay. So anyway, people tend to be kind of use these words loosey goosey, and they're often ambiguous. I'm going to try to stick to the words flat seventh and major seventh. Uh, and if I forget and just say seventh, normally that will mean the flat seventh, but I'll try to be careful. Now, in the blues, which again is uh, in some ways the basis for a large majority of uh, Western popular music, it's really the flat seventh that's dominant. Um, it's inserted all over the place. Uh, most commonly, as we'll talk about, is a turnaround chord. Uh, the turnaround, it, 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 all it refers to is that it's a, it's a device to resolve back to the tonic chord at the end of a phrase, usually the verse or the chorus. Uh, and that uh, resolving back to the tonic is, a, is an important part of harmonic structure. Um, doesn't mean that it you have to do it in every song, and of course uh, there are lots and lots of exceptions, but it is a very common thing. So uh, I just want to say a quick word about this before uh, giving some examples, and I'll illustrate uh, this all in the key of E major, um, where E is the one chord, A is the four chord, and B is the five chord. So in the circle of fifths above my shoulder, um, next to my head, you can locate the quadrant where E is in the outer center, surrounded by A and B, okay? Now, the term for a phrase-ending sequence a gen in general in music, a phrase-ending sequence of chords that resolves back to the tonic is called a cadence. There are many cadences. They go back hundreds of years. You can look them up. I'm just going to talk about the two most important ones today, okay? And they're the ones that go from the five chord, which in the key of E is the B major chord, 
that's the tonic of ease. That is called, for some reason, I don't know why, it's called the authentic cadence or cadence. So five to one is called the authentic cadence. And the other one, which may even be more ancient, um, is from the four chord to the one chord. So in the key of E, that would be from the A major chord to E major. That's called the plagal cadence. You don't need to know these names. Um, so um, let me just play these for you, just so you'll kind of hear what they sound like. And uh, so the authentic cadence. So that sounds nice and, uh, you know, harmonious and a nice resolution. And the plagal cadence. Da, da. Uh, and that might sound familiar to you. To me, that sounds even more harmonious. It's in a lot of sacred music, okay, in a lot of church music. And like that, okay? So, um, now, what gets really interesting is when you mix the two, okay? So, if we play a B major chord and add the flat 7, let's think about what the flat 7 is. It's, the, it's one full step below the octave, so B down a step is A. So, we're adding the note A to our B major chord, okay? And uh, so, here's B. And here's B7 with a flat 7. Okay, I can also play it like that. It's my preference. I think it's a little richer. But anyway, so B major. Okay, so what I am trying to convey to you is your chord progression, in your chord progression, you may want to go from B to E, but you can also mix in for kind of added richness that a little bit of that plagal cadence because the A that's in the B flat, B7, meaning a flat seven, is, is uh, the tonic of the four chord so you're building in some of that plagal cadence, even though it's the authentic cadence. In fact, listen to this. Okay, so that's a little longer sequence, but you can hear, hear the evolution of that cadence in that. Um, as I thought about how to illustrate this with a song, uh, I think, I don't know if I could come up with a better illustration uh, uh, than the Beatles song, I Saw Her Standing There, okay? Uh, it is in E, that's why I started in, in E major. Uh, and I'll play a, 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 a verse um, and uh, notice the turnaround at the end of this verse, and, and then we'll, we'll talk about it, okay? And I'm, I'm not going to really play it in rhythm, I'm, and I'll just kind of sing a few notes here and there just so you'll know where we are, okay, and how it goes. You were just 17, you know what I mean, and the way she looks is way beyond compare. I'll never dance with another. turnaround is those last three chords, E, B7, and again, we're talking about the flat seven and back to E. So we kind of establish home, go to that mixed cadence, if you like, right, and then we're solidly home. Now, I'm just going to play that without the flat seven, okay? Right. 
it's not quite as spicy. It's not as interesting to the ear, I think, with just the plain D major chord. It's fine, and you might, uh, it's perfectly uh, reasonable to uh, have that kind of uh, thing in a, in a song, depending on what the song wants to do or what you want to do with the song. Um, but for this, adding that seventh is really giving it a more bluesy sound, which is what the song is, is after, okay? Um, now, uh, uh, so, so I think that's an improvement, putting in that flat seventh. Um, interestingly, I don't know if you noticed, but they also play the flat seven D at the beginning part. The seventeen, you know what I mean. Whoops. The seventeen, you know what I mean. And the way she looks, here it comes Ray Young Man. Right? So I'll let you kind of explore that on your own. You can try substituting the the B in that case. Now in the middle. Between the, that beginning part and that turnaround, they have a pretty classic walk down. The chords are just E, I'm sorry, the chords are E, E7, flat 7, A, C, all major chords, okay? And the walk down is just um, uh, E, D, sharp, C, okay? It's kind of a semi-chromatic little walk down. It's very, very common. Okay, and the chords are Okay, the walk down is, is sounds very typical to the ear, but what's interesting here, and again, refer to the circle of fifths, the E, then we have that flat seven, which helps kind of continue the walk down. And then A keeps it going. But then and those, those chords are all in uh, solidly in the home quadrant. But then they bring in C, which is well outside the quadrant, okay? The home quadrant for E major, okay? And so it's kind of what I'd call a surprise chord. This is... Uh, this is exactly the kind of thing we talked about last week, where we introduce chords that are outside the home quadrant in the uh, circle of fifths. Uh, to my uh, mind, that C chord is exactly what makes this song really special, okay? Uh, even though it just comes at the end of a very standard walk down, um, starting on the E. Okay, and that that's part of the genius of the Beatles, that kind of surprise chord. They did that very, very often. Now, um, we might as well just, uh, while we're on this song, take a look at the middle eight of the song and finish it off. Uh, very, very simple. It holds uh, on the A, moves to a B, and then adds that flat seventh to the B to build tension before resolving back to the, the tonic of E. So, so uh, I'll play a little bit of that for you. <laughs> this idea of the turnaround using the flat seventh with uh, one of a rare song of mine that is uh, pretty standard blues uh, and I'll put it on my uh, channel it's called more ways it's also in the key of E major um, and at the end you'll again notice that uh, B7 the B with the flat seven uh, I don't want to say B flat seven because that would be confusing right so it's B7 and it's a flat seven. 
okay? Um, so, here's how it goes. Okay, and then we go back to the A. So we're not resolving back to the tonic, we're resolving to uh, the A of the four chord, but it still kind of gives you the same kind of uh, spice, okay? Um, and, you know, the, the, uh, the, um, the, the flat seven is illustrated in a little bit different way in Van Morrison's song, Brown Eyed Girl which we discussed last time and I said I'd bring back into this discussion. It's in the key of G major, so we have G, C, and D uh, chords for the 1, 4, and 5. And here, Van Morrison plays uh, D flat 7, D7 with the flat 7, every time instead of D. What does that do for the ear? Well, the flat 7 here is the note C, which is the tonic note of the four chord in the key of G major. C major chord is the four chord in the key of G major, and C is the tonic. So we're adding in that C. Again, we're kind of referring back to that plagal cadence, the 4-1 cadence, even though the progression is from the five chord, okay, which is D. So, um... Hey, where we go? Days where the rain came Okay, that's all I want to spend on that, but you get the idea. So it's not strictly a turnaround, but it's still using that kind of mixed cadence thing in this song. So flat sevens really give you a lot, and uh, a great song, the last one I want to uh, look at here is um, for the flat sevens is... Um, and this, this song almost makes a study of flat sevens. Uh, it's the song Ophelia by the band. Uh, the song is in, in C major, so it has F and G, as you'd expect. But it also, interestingly, steps outside that home uh, quadrant of C major and has an E chord, A major chord, and D major. Okay, so it sort of slips into the key of A major at times. Uh, it's a little ambiguous, which is a really interesting thing in songwriting that we'll come back to uh, several times, I'm sure. Apart from the C major, which is the tonic, so you wouldn't want to have a flat seventh on that. That's what you're resolving to. Apart from the C major uh, in this uh, chord progression and the F, uh, everything else is a flat seventh. Every other chord is, and it's very effective. Let me play you a little bit. Boards on the window, mail by the door. What would anybody leave so quickly for? Feel you. Where have you gone? So it's very, uh, it kind of has an old-timey, uh, maybe ragtime feel uh, to it, barbershop quartet feel, I don't know. Um, uh, but it's very, very, very effective. So you can see, you can kind of sprinkle, it's like salt. You can sprinkle it liberally around, you don't want to overdo it, but uh, it kind of brings uh, the essence of everything else in your harmonic structure out to some extent. Uh, there are many, many ways to use flat sevenths. You'll just have to play around with them, and I encourage you to. Um, I'd need a whole lot more sessions uh, to really fully discuss it. We're only scratching the surface. Um, I guess there is one more that I want to uh, play, uh, just look at it real quickly. It's one of my songs I promised to look at again last time. It's called Human Highway. It's in my... Uh, um, uh, on my channel, 
and again, this is in C major, both the chorus and the verse end on the G major chord, which is the five chord in the key of C major. And the chorus starts on C major, so it's kind of a five to one uh, resolution there, that authentic cadence. Uh, again, that's a powerful cadence. Um, but in the bridge, I shift uh, abruptly to B flat followed by A7, A with the flat seven, okay? And um, both of those chords, as you can see from the circle of fifths, again, we're in C major, both those chords are outside the home quadrant. So why A7 instead of A? Uh, well, the flat seven here in A, A7 is the note G, which is the perfect fifth of C, the original key. So it's like a connector at the end. Um, uh, it's like the, uh, the connector at the end of the verse and, and chords. It connects harmonically back to the home quadrant. I kind of, uh, it's like these notes are reaching back inside the home quadrant from outside of it. I kind of pictorially in my mind think of it as sort of shooting a harpoon uh, from outside the quadrant back inside the quadrant and kind of reeling us back in. So, um, so here's, uh, here's how that goes. Again, we're well outside it. Now, if I just played A major without the seven, you can hear there's nothing there that's connecting to to the kind of uh, home uh, quadrant. Okay, so uh, please listen to the song on my channel, uh, Human Highway, and. Um, uh, you can kind of, I think, hear a little more about how that works. So, and, and before we go on to the major sevens, let me just repeat what I said last time, and I'm sure I'll say many more times. As I was writing that song, at no time did I ever think about any of this, okay? These are things that come from uh, playing, or your your kind of sensibility to these things comes from uh, playing, listening, and developing your ear, okay? I'm only now just going back and sort of analyzing my own songs and some of these others. I'm, so I'm giving you a little shortcut here, but there's no substitute for training your ear, which is best done, again, by fooling around on your instrument. Uh, so how about major sevens, okay? You'll find these all over jazz. They're very jazzy sounding. Uh, in fact, let me just play you a C major 7 chord. And to my ear, that kind of sounds like almost the essence of jazz, okay? It imparts to my ear kind of a cool, softer, mellower sound. I love major 7s, and so do a lot of songwriters. They are also a resolving device because the note that's added the major seventh note, and in the key of C major, or in the, in the C major chord, you would add B. The flat seventh would be B flat, but here you're adding a B. And that's just a half step below the tonic. So that's what's called a leading note, okay, to the tonic chord. It just sits right below a half step, and so it's very natural to kind of resolve that, okay. <laughs> You can kind of hear it there. I'm playing just a C major 7. Okay. So there is a, a kind of, uh, it's like, it's maybe the simplest cadence there is, right? Um, so that's a very powerful way of resolving back to the tonic. Let's, uh, let's talk about some examples. Uh, one that's kind of a favorite of mine, is sort of the cool center of David Bowie's song, Space Oddity. 
Uh, this is in C major. Uh, there's a lot going on in the song. Um, uh, it can be a little rambunctious at times um, in certain places. But on the bridge, he brings in an F major 7 chord uh, and just moves between that and E minor, okay? And the thing to kind of be aware of is the major 7 note in F major 7 is E, okay? So that connects these two chords because we're going between that and E minor, okay? So here's how it goes. That's kind of a, an oasis in the song, okay? Um, and um, very simple but, but pretty use of uh, a major seven. A really brilliant example, in my opinion, of uh, use of major seventh is in Jimmy Webb's uh, beautiful song, Wichita Lineman, which most of you probably know is sung by uh, Glenn Campbell. Uh, I play it in C, which is not the original key, just because it's better for my voice. He begins the song, actually, with C major 7, going back and forth between D uh, with D minor 7. That's a very jazzy sequence, um, those, uh, those two chords. And then he launches into the verse right into an F major 7, okay? So I'll, I'll play that for you, and, and I'll sing a little bit. Um, I won't play the whole verse for you, but uh, just so you can see how it goes. C major 7, D minor 7. I am lineman for the county. Okay, that's all I want to go into there. But I'm going to play it again, and instead of the F major 7, I'm just going to play F major chord without the major 7. And what I want you to notice is I'm going to try to sing the melody over that. It doesn't work. The melody actually comes out of using that major 7, F major 7. So C major 7, D minor 7. I am lineman for the county. really need that E to drive the melody there. So that's a really important thing to notice, okay? Your harmonic structure really uh, helps to establish or drive the melody, okay? I keep talking about how kind of I often get melodies for free once I have certain components in place. Um, I don't seem to have to work very hard for melody most of the time, and this is an example of that, okay? Uh, so uh, look for the songs with major sevenths, uh, see what they're doing for the song, play around with those. And lastly, I, I want to um, uh, illustrate um, uh, uh, this great spice of the major seventh. I think of it as the pepper if the flat seventh is the salt. Uh, I think my most recent song that I wrote is called In This Place. Uh, it's on my channel. Uh, most of the verse is simply C major 7 to F major 7. It's been done a million times before. There's nothing new here. But at the end of the verse, I go into kind of a, uh, uh, I'll call it a false pre-chorus. And it's false because it doesn't really lead to a chorus. Um, where, where I go into mostly flat sevenths. So let me play this for you and then I'll come back and, and talk about it. Heard it said the fall of a sparrow shows that there's no key. Heard it said that blood
let me just tell you what's going on there. So in that very last line, that's D major seven. So E seven. Get ready. So we've got two flat sevens, and one of the reasons I wanted to uh, use this song is you can use flat sevens um, with minor chords as well. That D minor seven is almost an F chord, F major chord. Okay. There's a little cadence by itself, and this is very commonly used in folk music, folk rock. Neil Young uses it a lot, the Eagles, lots of people. But anyway, so after all that major seven stuff, okay, I go into this flat seven stuff. That's just a G. And then E with a flat seven. Ready, yeah, ready. Okay, the me again, this drives the melody. Now, when I was fooling around with this, I just kind of did this. I didn't have a melody yet, or words. I just like the sound of that. In fact, I end the song with kind of an outro over those chords. E7. Then A minor 7, G minor 7, G, E7, A minor 7, all flat 7s, okay? So, um, you know, again, play around with these things. Mix up the flat 7s and major 7s. They go as well together as salt and pepper do in the dishes you cook, okay? Mix them in liberally. Uh, so I hope this helps you get familiar with, again, the salt and pepper of music spices, these flat and major sevens. Next time we'll consider slightly more exotic spices, uh, meaning all the other notes in the scale that are not in the major and minor triads, namely what we call suspensions. I'll talk about that next time, using the notes 2, 4, and 6 from the scale uh, of the key that you're in. Uh, this is where the flavors of your song can really start to take off. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you next time, and until then, stay in tune.